Cherish is really a pilot study which is going to look at all of the techniques of monitoring the coastline, come up with best practice and then write up exactly how to do it, when to do it and where to do it. The innovation with the Cherish project is taking uh, all kinds of new technology. We're using drones, we're using laser scanners and then we're also taking national data sets uh, such as LiDAR and European data sets such as the European Space Agency uh, satellite data and finding ways to uh, make it more useful to the coastal monitoring and the protection of the heritage around the coast. One of the things that, that underpins the project is using state-of-the-art technology to, to look at what is a very dynamic environment. And so applying the, uh, the technology, the, the lasers and the drones that we have there mean that we're rapidly able to um, capture the, the data in the field. And probably where the real innovation comes is the, is the combination of different techniques that we use. So there's an area called the White Ribbon where there's no data um, because the boats can only push in so far using the water. So we're trying to close the White, white Ribbon uh, as much as possible. And one of the main techniques we use to, to try to achieve this is drones or unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. Um, so drones, uh, we fly uh, on the coast at low, at low tide and they take a series of overlapping images which are then run through uh, software um, and this results in uh, point cloud data, DSMs, um, orthomosaic and Google tile type of, type of imagery. Beneath the sea we use multi-beam sonar which maps the bathymetry which is the topography of the sea floor and then we try to create seamless onshore offshore maps. Part of the bathymetry mapping, the sea floor mapping using the boats as part of the Cherish project we do shipwreck monitoring so we do very high detailed uh, high resolution scans of shipwrecks uh, and then we can also assess change over time by running it through uh, uh, com uh, cloud compare or uh, co point cloud comparison software to, to assess how shipwrecks are breaking down and decaying over time. Another method that we can integrate with that is um, an ADCP which is an acoustic Doppler current profiler and this will measure, this is a hull mounted instrument that will measure uh, current profiles as you're taking a track over say a wreck. So from that we could look at maybe um, sediment transportation and where sediment is coming or going um, using this acoustic Doppler current profiler. But if we want to look at coastal erosion on say an eroding cliff face like we are here in Kalini, then we'd use a different technique. So we'd use laser scanning for that side on view uh, and then incorporating all these different data sets together helps us build up um, a picture of all the processes that are happening that are causing this erosion. I think one of the innovative things of the Cherish project is using the experience of the four different project partners. That you've got the geological experience from the geological survey, you also have the archaeological and cultural aspects from the Royal Commission on Ancient Historical Monuments of Wales and the Discovery Programme in, in Ireland, and you've also got the environmental um, input from the Aberystwyth University. So the Cherish project, we're, we're trying to get to a, a range of different stakeholders. The, the coast is accessible to all. Um, you have, you know, from the, the public who, who use the amenity, who go swimming or walking on, on the coastline, through to the likes of uh, local authorities and local government that, you know, actively monitor and man manage the, the coastline. The general public are becoming much more aware of, of climate change. That with the, the big storms that we've been seeing over the last few years, uh, the change that is then being able to see after that, changes to the coastline, changes to, to flooding. And so people are really able to, I think, uh, observe and appreciate the change that is occurring. And then that links directly with the, the changes that we're expecting from predicted climate change. So I guess what we'd hope would be a, a legacy output from the Cherish project would be uh, this unique baseline data set that's captured and timestamped over the duration of the project that will enable future uh, climate monitoring projects to come back to this data in the future and have really, really accurate high resolution data to be able to work with to assess change going forward. 
So it really puts the Ge Geological Survey internationally at the cutting edge of this type of research in terms of climate change.